Hello, my name is John Krajewski, and I'm a member of the product management team here at Inventus Wonderwear. And today I'm going to walk you through a video that's going to talk about better situational awareness through actionable alarm management. Uh, we've had a great amount of feedback from different customers that say is that, you know, their systems are getting larger and alarms are often too easy to configure and there hasn't been too much thought given into them um, and that there's just too many alarms in the system to manage. Now, outside of better practices on how to manage them, we're going to leave that for a different discussion. But with 70% of respondents in a recent survey indicating that their operations are impacted because of alarm overload, we thought that it was important for us to introduce capabilities on how to better manage that overload. And so what I'm going to do is walk you through some of the techniques that we've introduced within Touch 2014 to make this easier for you to manage. So I'm going to start with the first one here, which is an alarm border. Here you can see I've got a, a tank whose level is currently far too high. It's simulating an overflowing tank in this case here. And I'm showing here that there is a, um, a severity one alarm. It's a, this alarm border is showing that. And it's showing you a way of representing this alarm so that you can quickly distinguish what's happening. You can see that its color is in stark contrast to the rest of the application. And we'll talk about some other alarm borders. So what I'm going to do is bring up this other example I have here, which is just showing all the different states the alarm borders can be in. And I'll walk you through some of what you're seeing here. So with each alarm border, you'll see that they can do things like identify state, acknowledgement state. So you can see here that the, alar the unacknowledged alarms are blinking. The acknowledged alarms that are still in alarm state are steady. The ones that have returned to normal, they actually show with a different crosshatch and they've held back the alarm indicator or the, 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 yeah, the badge indicator here. So you see that there's different states as well as disabled and silence that are being shown in, by this information. You'll also notice that the alarm border is showing uh, the severity. So you, here you'll see the severity 1, 2, 3, and 4. Each severity has triple coded uniqueness. So for example, unique color, unique shape, and a unique indicator, in this case the numeric value. Because of that triple coding, it makes it, it very unambiguous. You'll be able to know explicitly that that is that type of alarm. Throughout the system here, we've dedicated alarm colors um, so that no other, no other case will you use red, only for critical alarms. And no other case do you use yellow, only for, only for high alarms. Cyan is reserved for medium alarms and magenta is reserved for low alarms. Those, those colors don't appear anywhere else in the system other than for those purposes. That makes it very um, simple for an oper operator to distinguish. We've also isolated this down into four levels of severity because those things then allow an operator to quickly understand what are his, his expected intentions or reactions to that. In this particular case, we've used the starting points of if it's a critical alarm, you should react to that within five minutes. If it's a high alarm, it should be reacted to within 30 minutes. If it's a medium alarm, it should be reacted to within 60 minutes. And if it's a low alarm, it should be reacted to within 120 minutes. If it does not be, need to be reacted to within that time frame, it should be removed from the alarm list and placed as an event uh, and tracked otherwise. So this really simplifies the operator's decision-making process. So there's more information that's also being shown in the alarm border, border, which is also what is the most urgent state. Because this, this indicator could be rolling up on something that has multiple states. So what I'm going to do in order to demonstrate that is I'm going to go back over here to filter 100, where I already had a overflow state on this level, which was an acknowledged alarm. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Object Viewer here to raise the turbidity of this unit above the alarm state. So I'm going to take it over 0.5 so that we can push this into a high turbidity alarm. So I'm going to open this and 0.51. So now I've generated a high effluent turbidity alarm. So you'll see that these have their own dedicated alarm borders. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate back up to the overview screen and look at the alarm border for that overall unit. So filter 100's alarm border, you'll notice, is saying that it's a, currently at severity 2 because the most urgent state is the highest severity that's currently not acknowledged. So because the critical alarm had been acknowledged, it's showing you the highest urgency here, which is the unacknowledged high alarm. So if I were to go back to filter 100 now and then take this and acknowledge the remaining alarms, it will now go back 
and my overview roll up and you'll notice that it'll revert back to the highest severity alarm because all the alarms on this unit are currently acknowledged. So it's not just showing you the, the severity and the state, but it's also showing you which is the most urgent to being reacted to. So those techniques with the alarm borders make it easy to distinguish what's an alarm and what action needs to be taken. Another element that's being shown inside of this particular demo is something we refer to as alarm aggregation. At each level within the system and within our system that goes down to the individual variable which is known as an attribute or at the higher level at the equipment level or what we call an object or even at multiple levels of equipment or what we call areas I'll be able to now have numeric values of the distribution of the alarms by severity. It's being used in this particular example to place these badges on the, on the navigation buttons. So for the gravity filter overview for all of my gravity filters I have one critical alarm and I have two high alarms. And you can see I'm breaking it down by the individual filter here where filter 100 has one critical and one high and filter 300 has just one high. I don't have examples right now of medium or low but they would also appear here in, in, their, in their respective places um, should those occur. Now you can see down here in my alarms, I'm going to click down to the alarms. This alarms here actually covers the whole system which is taking up this also this operational sample which is generating yet another alarm. So this is telling me my overall system has one critical and three high. And if I click into here you can see some of the alarm controls that we're using now and how they use some of this. So I can see my distribution of alarms using that alarm aggregation here by these tabs on this alarm control. And you can also see the alarm distribution in, in this um, stacked column chart that's over here show me the distribution of alarm by my units filters 100, 200, 300, and 400 and my overall system which is where I have a simulation object which is generated an alarm. So I currently have four alarms on my system and I can see how they're distributed throughout this. And all that information is being provided by these uh, alarm aggregation variables which are on the system. These techniques of both using alarm borders and leveraging alarm aggregation should make it much simpler to be able to handle large volumes of alarms. Alarm banners have been an ineffective way of being able to handle a large number of alarms. You can see here that once I get to four or five alarms, I'm not going to be able to see what's happening in the, uh, in the alarm banner. Now, the alarm banner may still be effective in a scope of area where you're not likely to overflow that alarm, but when you start getting into these areas where you're going to have much more alarms than, than can be demonstrated in just a couple of alarms of an alarm banner, these techniques, such as alarm borders and alarm aggregation and, and these badges on your navigation, really make it easier to assess the situation, make a decision on what action should be taken, and navigate directly to that area where you need to take that action. And these techniques that are available within Wonderware System Platform 2014 and InTouch 2014 will allow you to achieve better situational awareness through actionable alarm management. Thank you.